You might think you have a lot going on, but trust me, your life can fit into a pocket planner. When I first started in the planner community, the focus was on nice, big planners, highly decorated spreads, and lots and lots of detail packed into your paper companion. But over the past year, I have seen a trend back towards smaller sized planners. Small sized planners and pocket notebooks basically took over the YouTube ecosystem, even in productivity spheres. And in planner communities, we are seeing trends where both influencers and planner companies are sizing down, creating more pocket sized and small options and consuming those as well. So today we're going to be talking about that trend towards smaller planner sizes and by the end of this video you are going to know if a small or pocket sized planner is right for you. So essentially what I saw as a member of the planner community online was a turn towards small and pocket sized planners and notebooks throughout 2023. I actually think this has been a trend since a little bit before that but we really saw it explode in 2023. This is true generally across the board, I think. People who were normally in A5 size planners and would describe themselves as an A5 only person were making the size shift down towards B6 size planners, but then I also saw people who use B6 going into even smaller planners like pocket, personal, A5 size as a way to size down from B6. This is in fact the exact map that I made uh, over the past two years. So this is 2022. I got tired of the size. I got tired of the maintenance of this big A5 size planner. This is the Hobonichi cousin. And in 2023, I sized down to a B6 common planner. This was advertised and marketed as a smaller, more portable version of the Hobonichi cousin. That was its main marketing. So we're seeing that trend bear out in marketing, right? People are wanting more smaller sized planners. They're wanting to size down from their big planners that are difficult to carry around or that they just feel like have too much space. And then in 2024, I'm going to size down even further into a Hobonichi Day Free. So let's just examine the size difference. You can kind of see the size difference as I'm holding it here. The uh, B6 is certainly smaller than the A5, but still very thick. And then I'm going way, way, way smaller and thinner in the Day Free um, for 2024. And the Day Free has way fewer layouts than either of these two planners as well. It's basically just monthlies and a yearly section and then blank pages in the back compared to the monthly, yearly, and weekly sections in both of these planners plus dailies in the cousin and goal setting pages and quarterly planning pages in the common planner. So big size down. And I think a lot of people are making this sort of trend over the past two years with 2023 sort of being the culmination of that. Um, but in addition to this trend I saw and experienced personally in the planner community, we are also seeing a lot of miniature books and tiny composition notebooks just like taking over YouTube in general, even from people who are not in the planner community. I have seen a lot of general productivity creators or productivity consumers start using small books as a replacement specifically for their phones. I think this really speaks to a need we are feeling right now in the year 2024 to have things be very simple and very easy. So high maintenance maximalism is kind of out in terms of what we are creating for our productivity systems. People are trending towards a more simplistic way of being productive, such as a smaller planner or smaller notebook. As I said before, I know that I am trending smaller over the past few years. So I feel this way in my personal productivity system, which is a really pared down version of what I had before. I recently made a video on my entire productivity system, including my planner and all of the apps and digital tools that I'm gonna be using in 2024. So I will leave that linked up in the cards. I think it's a really, uh, interesting video if you know what my system used to look like you might really like it so that goes through everything in more detail if you want to check it out but the point is that people are looking to pare down their productivity systems the sizes of their planners how complex everything is and I think we are seeing a swing back from highly decorated highly curated task management systems to a more organic simplistic and dare I say minimalistic approach you guys know I'm a big fan of handwriting things out and mapping things out like mine mapping on paper. So it makes me really happy to see that the rest of the productivity world is getting their hands on paper and trying it out as an alternative to using a phone. I think that is awesome. But before we get into all of that, I want to take a second to thank this week's sponsor, which is Parade. I don't know about you, but I used to think that comfortable underwear was something that happened to other people who were special and not to me, an ordinary girl who was trying to live her life. But Parade changed all that. 
Their products are soft, stretchy, durable, sustainable, inclusive, and all for a way more affordable price than other underwear brands. In particular, my mind was blown by the Dream Fit Triangle Bralette. I wear bralettes so much that the ones I had before were basically rags, like the elastic was popping out and everything. So I was super excited to pick up the Dream Fit Triangle Bralette in the color Coco. I really like the size of the triangle, which is clearly cut and sewn to fit right around your curves. Plus, I love the extra space here on the band. It makes it so much more comfortable than other bralettes that I've owned, which usually have very thin bands. And the bras are not only adjustable in the strap, but also in the band, which I never see on other bralettes. It's just such a nice feature to have. I also picked up some of their pajamas and guys, I might be converted. I'm normally a ratty t-shirt and sweatpants bedtime girly, but I tried the Lux Satin Easy Sleep Short and Lux Sleep Button Up in the color Wisteria, and I just feel so adorable. I've always been skeptical of pajama sets because sometimes they can just feel like hot and sticky and gross, but this material literally feels so soft. It's like I'm sleeping in nothing and it doesn't make me overheat at all. So if any of this sounds up your alley, click the link in my description box and enjoy a 50% off discount site-wide with my code theory50. Thank you so much to Parade for sponsoring. Back to tiny planners. And that sort of brings me to my second point, which is that smaller planners and pocket notebooks are so easy to carry around. They are just so much smaller than an A5 or like a giant planner with a big cover and a bunch of rings. With the Hobonichi Cousin, it's often sold with a planner cover like this, which brings up the total size to pretty big. I would say most planners are sold with planner covers in mind. For my Hobonichi Day Free, I also have a planner cover. Obviously, it's not sizing it up as large as the Cousin planner cover would size something up, but it's still bigger than it would be if I was just carrying around this little book on its own. And I can get the argument for that, like many planners need covers because they are fragile or they don't hold up on their own to the wear and tear of carrying them everywhere. But the covers and the accessories make things even larger and even more complicated. But even if you're still just using a regular notebook. This is an A5 size Leuchtturm notebook, the favorite among, or used to be the favorite among bullet journalers. I'm not sure what the favorite is now, but this was a, an old bullet journal that I had. And now I would like never buy an A5 size notebook. <laughs> I really like the pocket size or the smaller size. It's so much smaller, so much easier to carry around as I'm holding these two side by side. This one's not that heavy compared to a denser planner with a cover like the Hobonichi Cousin, but but it is still heavier and bigger and takes up more space than this pocket size moleskin that I have here, which is essentially the same type of planner, the same type of notebook, but this one can fit in my back pocket this one, I need a backpack. I also feel like this makes smaller planners and pocket notebooks just generally a lot less wasteful and less expensive than their larger counterparts. I always find myself having blank pages in my larger notebooks. Last year, I used this common planner, as I mentioned, which is sort of built with the idea that it has a blank notebook built right into the uh, planner. So all these pages in the back here are blank. And as you can see, I had so much empty space, like none of these pages got used. There was, I think, 360 in total. Yeah, 365. Enough for a single day per page. And I used maybe a hundred of them. I can see that there's a little bit of writing over here. So like 110 was the number that I made it to. So that is a third of the pages that were available to me is what I used. There is no need for me to have a big notebook with this many pages that has dated material in it because that just means all of this goes to waste. Now I've talked a lot about on this channel how I am not here to shame anyone who is not using like a dated weekly section. I've talked a lot about how like when I have a bad spell of mental health, my weeklies look like this. They're completely blank or they're only half filled or they don't have all the details, they're missing information, something to that effect. And that's okay. Look, it's fine to have empty spreads, of course, but I find for me is that it's not worth it to purchase and carry around a large size planner if I am just going to use the same amount of paper that is already in a smaller sized or pocket sized planner, like one of these. Larger planners can also get to be quite expensive. This was $50, whereas it's 
States pocket size version was $30. Now Sterling Inc. is kind of an artisan boutique brand, but this is even true if you're just using a blank notebook. The full size Loic term is about $25 or $30, and the pocket size Loic term, again, this is a moleskin, but the pocket size Loic term is all the way down to about $18 to $20. So you're saving $5 to $10 when you buy smaller, even just for blank notebooks. I also personally really like the small space in smaller planners because it forces you to prioritize your task lists. It's gotten to the point where looking at a full A5 notebook kind of makes me agoraphobic. Again, back in the Hobonichi Cousin, this is what a daily page looks like. There is so much room and freedom to write down every little thing that's on my mind every single day. And this might seem great, or if maybe you have a very full life and you are always writing things down every single day, maybe this is perfect for you. But for me, I look at this and I know my actual to-do list is gonna take up maybe that much of the the page and then the rest of it just feels anxiety provoking to me. Not to mention that it can feel like, oh, I have all of this space to write my to-do list down. Why don't I write out every single thing that's on my mind every single day? And then you're just looking at a very long to-do list or a very long thought dump every single day. So I like the smaller space because it forces me to think about the things that I actually have to do each day because that's all I can really fit in the tiny daily section. This is what the Hobonichi Weeks layout looks like. It is a sort of B6 height, but very slim version. Again, I would consider this a smaller notebook. And this is what the dailies look like or the weekly layout looks like. Super small amount of space to write your priorities for each day. You have a memo page that you can scribble on if you need extra space, but the actual dated space is really, really tiny. So it really helps you prioritize. Here's an example of my Hobonichi weeks from last year. You can see that I can fit maybe five or six tasks in the tiny daily space here. And that is realistically all I have time to do on any given day for work. So it's the perfect amount of space right there for me to uh, fill out my tasks and keep it super, super simple. This one obviously has a little bit more space than the weeks, but still very small, very minimal. And this is really the reason why I'm gonna keep using small planners going forward for the foreseeable future, because small planners and notebooks keep me from feeling overwhelmed. Larger planners have more space and I am tempted to fill them with as many tasks and as much productivity stuff as I can, but if I do that, I will be quickly, quickly overwhelmed. It's the reason I transitioned from the cousin to the smaller common planner, and it's the reason I am transitioning from smaller common planner down to my Hobonichi day free. There are just less layouts, less opportunities to be overwhelmed, and less things I feel the pressure to fill out in a very small, very tiny notebook. I will say I do now and then reach for a blank notebook in a larger size because this is a lot of good valuable space for when you're doing things like project mind mapping or when you just need somewhere to dump all of your thoughts. The tiny space in a smaller notebook doesn't necessarily give you the opportunity to brain dump in the same way. You certainly can, but this is a little bit more freeing. So I like to keep a blank notebook in a larger size around just so I can loosely mind map or um, dump some thoughts out. And then from there, I can always scan that and print it out in a smaller size to fit in my smaller planner or replicate the useful information into my smaller planners and notebooks. But I don't think an A5, at least for the foreseeable future or a larger size, sized planner or notebook will really be my go-to uh, for a while because I really like being forced to optimize down and forced to not plan too much. Putting down just the essentials means I always have exactly what I need and nothing more. And that is what I am carrying with me in this super small, super convenient size to carry around, much more convenient than a big A5 size planner. I will say a lot of people do solve this by just having their productivity system on their phone. And certainly for 2024, a large portion of my productivity system is going to be on my phone. But as I mapped out at the beginning of this video, I think we are seeing a trend of people who primarily use their phone start switching to paper methods because they are recognizing how powerful it can be to have a productivity system or have a space 
that is not controlled by the internet, basically. I can reference all of my tasks on my phone at any given time. And I think it's a great use of the phone, but a pocket notebook or a pocket planner also gives that same portability while not locating the productivity system on a device that also has really distracting stuff that maybe you don't wanna contend with when you're just trying to reference your task list. I always, always find myself on Instagram instead of doing the actual thing I checked my phone to do. So a pocket notebook is a great replacement for that and is also super portable. The way I sort of strike that balance is each day I'll, I'll have a master task list in a to-do list app on my computer or on my phone. I use Things or formerly Things 3. I'm not sure exactly what the proper name of it is anymore, but I use that one. I go through my task list there and I basically just write out a daily with a few different tasks from that list that I need to get done. And I will write that in this small space in my planner. And then that's sort of how the two work together. So as soon as I have it out of my productivity system, then I just have to rely on this notebook. I don't have to risk going back into my phone, into a place with all the distractions, and I can just check these off one by one here and then at the end of the day update my task list on my computer with the, the things that I have already gotten done. May seem like duplicating info a little bit, but having a location where I can house everything that I need to get done is super helpful when those lists get really long and I can just extract the useful information into a distraction-free zone, like a paper notebook. What do you think? Are we moving towards a world where small planners and pocket notebooks reign supreme? Or do you still like your nice, spacious A5s and B6s? Let me know down in the comments comments below. If you're still trying to figure out what planner is right for you, check out this video right here next to my head. It has some useful tips for picking the right planner for your lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching, for being awesome, for being subscribed. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!